Hi, I would like to talk you through an absorbent slab. Let me show you what we have. This is a 0 0.002 molar, um, isn't that pretty? 0 0.002 molar solution of Red 40. It's just water with food dye, Red 40, that you and I eat. Um, and here is the problem. I am going to give my students um, some Gatorade. It's a fruit punch Gatorade, and the only dye in it is Red 40. And my question to my students is, what's the concentration? How much of that Red 40 is in the Gatorade, that fruit punch? So what they're going to have to do is create a calibration curve, a beer Lambert plot. Um, in order to do that, you're going to have to have a graduated cylinder, a pipette, and cuvettes. Um, so we're going to use a colorimeter and we're going to use absorbance um, in order to figure out how much dye is inside of that, that fruit punch. Um, now, the principle behind this, driving principle, it is the fact that when you have a colored solution, okay, and you shoot light through it, so this is going to be light going in, the light that goes in is going to be less than the light that comes out. So this is the in light and that is the out light. And the amount of light over here is less. And here's the reason why. When light goes through the solution, some of the light is absorbed by those molecules. And the cool thing is, is that the amount of molecules in here and the amount of light that's absorbed is directly proportional, meaning the more molecules, the darker this is, the more light that's absorbed. And the lighter that this is, the fewer the molecules that are in that solution, when light goes through it, less light is absorbed. So we're going to use that principle to figure out the concentration of red 40 inside of fruit punch. So here's how you're going to do it. You take your, uh, your stock solution, which in this case is the 0 0.002 molar, and we're going to start making some dilutions of it. So what I would do is, with my safety glasses on, um, I would pour uh, five mils right there. I'd pour five mils of red 40 inside of this, and then I would get distilled water, and I'd bring it to volume of 10 mils. Um, if you have um, a volumetric flask, that would be even more accurate. I have my students who's graduated cylinders since my classroom doesn't have the tiny little volumetric flasks. Um, so we bring it to 10 mils. Now, let me just do a really quick review on dilutions with you. Here is your formula. M1V1 equals M2V2. So my M1, that's my initial concentration, and that would be the 0 0.002 molar. 0 0.002 molar. The volume that I'm going to use is five mils, okay? Now, I want to know the final molarity, final concentration. Um, and the final volume I said was going to be 10 mils, uh, 10 mils. So if we solve for this, just divide 10 mils by both sides, notice the mils will cancel out and we're going to get um, M2, a molarity of 0 0.001 molar. And it will look lighter than this. It'll look lighter than that color. Um, and you keep doing that. You just keep doing dilutions. I would do maybe um, a 2.5 and maybe a one and bring those to a volume of 10. Then we could do a serial dilution where I take maybe the um, 2.5 that I brought to volume with 10. It's gonna be pretty light. I take that solution and I make a dilution of that. That would be a serial dilution. So you make a series of dilutions. I recommend to my students that they do at least five. So they would have five cuvettes. Let me show you this. They would have five cuvettes. Here's my five cuvettes right there. And it would be this gradient of color going from dark red all the way down to a really, really light red color. Um, now, the data that you're recording, you're going to record the molarity. So I would have a cuvette with my neat standard, the darkest color. Um, I would put that into my machine I, and I would read it. And let's say that the, um, that the absorbance on this is going to be um, 0.1. I'm going to go kind of easy on this. And then I make my dilution 0.001. And I pour that dilution into my little cuvette. Now be careful, word on the cuvette. You'll see that there's a smooth side 
and there's a, a graded side. Um, look at your instrument. You're going to see where the light shoots through. You want to make sure that the light shoots through the clear side. And if you have Kim wipes, wipe that down so that there aren't any oils from your, your fingers on it. Um, so I take that cuvette that has the first dilution, put that in my machine, and let's say it's 0.05. Um, and I do that for all five of my um, of my solutions. This is actually a really easy lab. You make the dilution and then you put that cuvette in a machine, you get the number for the absorbance. That's all you're doing. Um, now, after you do your five, so we're going to have five of these. Let's say you have 0.0005 or 0.0001. Um, and then let's do like a 0.0005. Wow, we're getting really small. Um, and we would have like 0 0.025, we'd have 0 0.0125, 0 0.00625, something like that, okay? Then you take your unknown. So I give my kids a Gatorade and they pour a little bit inside of here. Um, and then they put that in the machine. So they um, will get an absorbance, let's say, of 0 0.020. And I'm wondering, what is that absorbance right there? Uh, well, there are a couple of ways that you can do this. I require that my students do a Beer Lambert plot. The easiest way to do this is on Excel. So on Excel, you put in these uh, values. The absorbance is going to be your Y and the molarity is going to be your X. Use an XY scatter plot. Use XY scatter plot. Um, if you're doing Excel, I'll put that in parentheses. This is going to be for Excel. Um, and when you do Excel, it's really nice. They have all, all different things that you can do. Um, you want to get a trend line, um, and it's going to give you an R value on it, as well as the equation. You want an equation for the line. Um, and it will plot it like this. You're going to have your absorbance as the y-axis, molarity as the x-axis. And here's what you'll see, this beautiful linear line. As you have a low concentration, there's a low absorbance. As you have a high concentration, there's a high absorbance up there. It's this beautiful linear line. Um, linear line, that's a little redundant, huh? Um, and with Excel, you can get that equation of the line. It'll do a trend line to give you the R value for best fit, to um, show you how straight your data was, how close it was to a straight line and the equation of the line. So you're going to get something that looks y equals mx plus b. Now there will be values for m and b. So let's just pretend you have something like y equals 2x plus 0.5, okay? So to figure out the absorbance, that's your x, or excuse me, to figure out the molarity, the concentration inside that Gatorade, all you do is take that number from the absorbance plug it right there, 0 0.020. That's what I put in, equals 2x plus 0.5. Solve for x, and that is going to give you um, the molarity, the molarity. So there's one way to do it, and you need to be able to read an absorbance graph. You need to be able to create um, that graph. This is called a Beer-Lambert plot. When I worked as an organic chemist, this is actually what I did all the time. It was GCMS, and then you create calibration curves, beer lambert plots. And that's how I would identify the amount of a substance in soil and water samples. I used this for years. Um, so this is a beer lambert plot, something that you need to be able to make. Now, there is another way to do this. Um, you have this data set right here. Remember how I said this is linear, which means we could do this as a ratio. Check this out. So you could actually figure this out right now. Um, okay, you can take any two points and set them equal to each other as ratios since it's linear. That slope is constant. So I could take my, um, let's do the point 0.1 is the absorbance divided by 0.002 is the molarity. That ratio is going to have to equal the absorbance of 0 0.020 divided by the molarity. So all we have to do is 
a cross multiply. Let me do that for you really fast, in fact. So we would have a 0.1 times x equals 0 0.020 times 0 0.002. And I'm going to divide both sides by a 0.1. So we are going to have 0 0.02 0.002 divided by 0.1, and we end up with a molarity of 4 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. That would be the concentration of red 40 inside of Gatorade, fruit punch Gatorade. Um, kind of cool, pretty powerful that we can do that. Now, I do want to tie this back to the equation for absorbance. The equation for absorbance, so big A equals a, B, C. We are going to have C is concentration, B is the length of the cuvette, and A is going to be the molar absorptivity. Well, these two, length of the cuvette, that's the same for everything. That's going to be one centimeter. The molar absorptivity, I'm using red 40 for all of my experiment, so that's going to be the same. Because these are constant, that means absorbance is proportional equivalent to concentration. And that's why we can do this. I just did A1 over C1 equals A2 over C2 because A and B are constant. So this is how you can tie everything together. Notice we can do it with a formula. We can do it with a graph. And then we can do it with just a ratio, thinking it through logically. So several ways that you can do um, absorbance. Again, the principle being the amount of light that goes in is going to be less than the amount, or excuse me, the amount of light that goes in is greater than the amount of light that comes out. And that's directly proportional to the number of molecules inside of here. So we can use that direct proportionality um, to figure out an unknown concentration by creating a calibration curve of your Lambert plot. You make the known concentrations get the absorbance and then you can find the absorbance of an unknown and calculate the molarity of that unknown. Pretty powerful. All right, enjoy the lab. I think you'll like it. Have a good day. Thanks.